Hey friends, I'm super excited to have you for our course, Full Philosophy. This starter kit is going to be your unique opportunity for you to find more personal meaning in your photography and hopefully to motivate you to think more critically. Why do you make photos? For whom do you make photos for? And how can you find more personal meaning and purpose in your photography? The way that this course could be used is just skip it around. Ultimately, we made this course to give you the maximum flexibility in your life. And the reason why we made it zip file, you could download it all offline, you could share it with your friends, put it on thumb drives, whatever. Ultimately, we want you to go and learn at your own pace. This course is gonna be super exciting because not only is it gonna be educational, but it's also gonna give you the chance to reflect, a chance for you to interact with the Air Kim Forum, a chance for you to do assignments and activities to push yourself outside your comfort zone. Photolosophy, there is no right or wrong. Essentially, it's your own personal photography philosophy and for you to find more personal meaning. And the way this is, this course is organized, there's gonna be all these direct links for you to download different course content, extract the zip files, check out the, the different documents to kind of guide you through the courses. There's gonna be lots of PDFs, there's gonna be lots of different links and different documents to inspire you. And once again, go at your own pace, Feel free to skip around, you don't have to go in chronological order. If you have any questions or difficulties accessing any of the information, just email us at hapticindustries at gmail.com. And really excited to have you to see what you could do. Hey friends, so what is photolosophy and why is it important? So essentially photolosophy is a word that we made up which stands for photography philosophy. And the purpose of Photolosophy is for you to find more purpose and meaning in your photography. And everything I'm sharing about this course is based on my personal experiences. So I used to be stuck in what they call the social media rat race. The idea is you go out and you're trying to make a really good photo, you rush home, you process it, you upload it to Facebook or Instagram or Flickr, and you try to get as many likes as possible. And I think when you're starting off, this is kind of a fun way to start off photography because you get feedback, people are giving you comments and likes and it feels good. The problem is, as time goes on into your photography, you start to get stuck into this rat race where it becomes more about accumulating followers and more likes, not making photos which are personally meaningful to you. And so one philosophical question I could ask you in the beginning of this course is, if you didn't have Facebook or Instagram to share your photos, would you still make photos? What kind of photos would you make? Who would you share with? How could you share your photos? And what kind of ultimate meaning does photography give you? One thing I like to do is consider myself 90 years old and on my deathbed and looking back at the last few decades of my photography and asking myself, am I happy? Am I proud? Am I fulfilled with the photos that I made? Because, spoiler alert, we're all gonna die. Knowing that we're going to die, how can we use this as a focus to help us make photos which are meaningful to us. So for myself, I study sociology in school, and the reason why I make photos and my photo philosophy is I make photos to give some sort of social critique, so some sort of social commentary, or to present my version of the world with others. I studied sociology, and so for me, photography and street photography is visual sociology. Photography is a way for me to better understand other people, and also it's a way for me to understand myself. So even one thing I like to do in my photography is photograph my loved ones because photographing my loved ones is a reminder that they're going to die and I'm going to die, but I want to be grateful of my life while I'm still alive. And in so, some ways, photography is a meditation on life and death. When you're alive, showing your gratitude towards life and living by making photos which bring you joy and could bring other people joy, but also a meditation on death that after you make photos of people, they're gonna die and eventually you're gonna die. So once again, photolosophy is your own personal philosophy for finding more contentment in your life. And there are certain cultural values that I wanna share like frugality, uh, being economical, making photos that are more focused on yourself and not impressing other people. And also for us to be like children, to have a childlike sense of place, to find more focus through Zen minimalism, for us to conquer our fears in photography through stoicism. So this course is gonna wrap up all these different concepts and help empower you throughout the course. All right, friends. So in this video, I wanna share with you a little bit about social dynamics and photography, street photography, and how to build your confidence as a photographer. I think one of the best things about photography and street photography is your unique opportunity to interact with real humans. So I think in today's world, 
the norm is to be antisocial. We go to the gym, we put on headphones, you don't make eye contact with people, and actually it's very alienating, and I think that's actually what causes a lot of depression. You know, it's pretty obvious that the more we interact with other people, especially people we're interested in, people we care about, people we love, even strangers, the happier we are. And so even one thing I've been doing is I've been working out at this park gym and I just talk to strangers. And even one thing I've been doing is I've been bringing along my GoPro, recording strangers, talking with them, interacting with them. So realize that photography and street photography is your tool, it's your passport into other people's lives. The more you interact with people, the better. And for the longest time in street photography, I made the mistake of thinking of people as just photo objects, meaning I'd go out into the streets and just find weird or interesting looking people and just photograph them and upload them to Instagram or Facebook and get a bunch of likes. But now I'm starting to realize photography is probably the best way to humanize strangers, to humanize other people. So rather than seeing people as weird or different, using photography as a tool to bring you closer to other people. And also with ethics in photography, I personally like to follow what I like to call the silver rule of photography, which is don't photograph others as you don't want others to photograph you. So for example, there's a big tricky thing about photographing homeless people. So if I were homeless, I wouldn't want a photographer like sniping me from behind a bush with a huge zoom lens and treating me like an animal. I would prefer that the photographer would come to me and say, hey, you know, you know, what's your life story? You know and then actually interact and engage with me. And then if they ask, oh, can I photograph you? They'll be like, oh, I'd be totally cool with it. Or if they were to photograph me looking homeless and destitute, I'd want them not to show my face. So of course, everyone's stance of ethics and morals and photography is different. And you shouldn't let other people superimpose their ethics and morals onto you. Because ultimately, there is no 100% correct form of ethics. All ethics must be formulated by you and defined by you. And I think even the silver rule isn't perfect because there's always different circumstances. So basically what I would recommend is if you want to be more confident as a photographer photographing other people, be more comfortable being photographed yourself. So a lot of us as photographers, this is a little bit weird, we don't like to be photographed ourselves. And I think a lot of that stems from the sense that we're we don't kind of like the way we look or we don't like the way we look in photographs. So some of us, we might be older. Some of us might have a little bit more you know, fat on our faces or we, we have certain scars on our faces or we, there's certain angles we don't like. And so I think one of the best ways to build our confidence in photographing other people is to actually let other people photograph us. So even giving your camera to your loved one, to your sister, to your friend, have them photograph you and you could even practice shooting selfies on your phone and realizing that there's all these different angles that you could photograph yourself. This is a pro tip. If you don't want the double chin in your photos, you just stick your chin out like that and you stick out your chin towards the camera. So become more comfortable, fo uh, comfortable being photographed yourself and then you'll feel more comfortable photographing others because some of us, if we don't like other people photographing us, we assume other people don't like us photographing them, which is not true because people like Eric Kim, I love the attention of being photographed. And so the reason why I have no problem shooting street photography is that I like when other people photograph me. Even I did this episode with Kaiman Wong in Hong Kong. I was walking on the streets as a pirate and all these tourists are taking photos of me and I actually like the attention and stuff like that. But of course not everyone's the way I am. So once again, remember that photography, street photography is a way for you to be happier because you'll interact more with people. If you're about to photograph a stranger, my suggestion is ask them about their life story and even offer to email them the photos afterwards, show them the LCD screen, interact with them. Also be more comfortable photographing yourself. So even as a small assignment or activity, Take some selfies of yourself, put your camera on tripod, shoot self portraits of yourself, or give your, uh, your camera to your friend, your loved one, or your kid to photograph you. And if you don't like to be photographed by others, or if you, you're not comfortable with your self image, ask yourself, why not? And reflect and meditate on that. And so for, uh, to share some of your thoughts, go to Eric Kim forum, forum.ericimphotography.com, or just Google Eric Kim, Photograph, uh, Eric Kim forum, and share your personal thoughts. So are you comfortable being photographed by others? 
If not, why? If yes, why? And what is your personal code of ethics in photography? When you're photographing beauty in the mundane, realize that there's so much beauty all around you regardless of where you are. So for example, you could even find beauty at home. So photographing your loved ones, you could photograph your kids, you could photograph yourself, shoot selfies of yourself in the, in the mirror. What you could also do is you could photograph your own bedroom, you could photograph your own living room. If you're by the window and there's a nice stream of light, just photograph that. There's so many beautiful things all around you that you can photograph. Even the beautiful thing about street photography is that shooting street photography isn't always about finding the weirdest looking people out there. I think street photography is finding beautiful everyday moments like an old couple enjoying a cup of tea or a nice coffee together, uh, a grandfather playing with the kid at the park, uh, a beautiful moment or a mundane thing could be just a piece of trash on the ground or a bag blowing in the air. And I think the more we could find beauty in the mundane or the beauty in everyday life, the more inspired we could get and the more grateful we could be alive, uh, be more grateful of being alive. So my practical suggestion is, yeah, regardless of where you are, what your situation in life is, use every single opportunity to find beauty in the mundane. A practical tip is all the time that you're commuting to work or you're at home, time you might otherwise be on your phone, just turn off your phone or switch it to airplane mode and use your camera to find the beauty all around you. Photograph textures, photograph light, photograph different color combinations. And often this process of visual detoxification is a good way for us to find more beauty in the mundane because with YouTube, with Netflix, and all these flashing lights, it's so hard to find beauty in everyday things. Look at children, see how they touch a tree for the first time, how they can see the wrinkles in their grandfather's forehead, or even use beauty in the mundane as a way for you to re-spark your childlike curiosity of the world. So once again, friends, realize with beauty in the mundane, beauty is all around you, it's just your choice to find it. So friends, one of the things we want to share with you in photo philosophy is this. Make photos as a form of visual therapy and art therapy for yourself. So for example, I think one of the best ways to be happier in life is actually to make more stuff. I don't think happiness is actually a good definition for what we're trying to achieve. I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to spark more joy in our lives. And joy is this kind of exuberant, uplifting feeling, a feeling of power and control that we get that we could create our own destiny in life. So the reason I think photography is so powerful is that when we're in the creative zone or the flow of making photos, we're being challenged, we're being excited, we're making something. And photography is such a joyful process in everything from the making photos, because when you're actually out on the streets making photos, you're talking to strangers, you're moving around, you're seeing new things. And so for me, street photography is a way to interact with the world. Then when you go home, you're looking through your photos and you're deciding which photos to keep and which photos to ditch and how also how to sequence to edit your photos. That's also a lot of fun too and also the way you might process your photos. If you shoot film photography, it's also fun to get your photos processed and using the Zen meditation of processing your photos. And also at the very end, there's joy in sharing your photos with other people. So realize that photography is this whole holistic process of finding more joy and happiness in the world. Also, I feel with photography, it gives us a chance to go out and interact with the world. A lot of us are kind of sad and miserable because we just stay at home all day, we're watching Netflix, we're just mindlessly scrolling through Facebook or Instagram. We're the happiest when we're actually actively creating. So one thing I would recommend for you to think about is if you want to be happy in life, make more stuff, make more photos, make more art, and share more things with other people the more you could create, the better. And don't just limit yourself to photography. Think of yourself as a visual artist. You can make paintings, you can make photographs, you can make sculpture, you can make anything, you can make videos, and you can even make poetry and other forms of art. So once again, remember that photography is not limited to just your, uh, your camera. You could also use your phone to make photos. So even going on a little street walk or a street hunt, going out and making photos with your phone and essentially make photos of things which spark joy into your heart. So once again, remember that photography isn't just 
taking snapping photos to upload to social media, it's rather a way for you to create more sort of joy and meaning in your photography. In Photolosophy, one of the most beautiful things about photography is that it's a way for us to clear our minds and I kind of treat photography and street photography like walking meditation. So the basic concept of walking meditation is then is this. Just by walking, it helps clear your mind, it helps you come up with new ideas, it relieves stress. And I think street photography is essentially walking meditation is. You have a hopefully a small camera around your back and around your neck or around your wrist. And what you're trying to do in street photography is essentially clear your mind and find all this beauty and joy all around you. And one of the practical suggestions I would give you in street photography is never expect to go out and make good photos. So <laughs> what that means is a lot of the times before I'd go out and shoot street photography, I'd be like, oh, I really, really want to get a good photo. It's like, oh, you're just running around trying to make good photos. And the irony is that the harder you try to make good photos, the less likely you're actually to make good photos. Whereas if you just have your camera on your neck or around your wrist and you're just going for a walk, you kind of let the photos come to you. And sometimes when you least expect it, interesting things happen to you. So I'd practically recommend you to always have your camera on your neck, around your wrist, like a bracelet or a necklace. And don't expect anything, but be perceptive to everything that happens for you. So when you go out on the street photography walk or walking meditation with your camera, don't use headphones, don't look at your phone, either turn off your phone or if you shoot with your phone, switch it to airplane mode and use it as a way for you to just stop, walk 25% slower than you normally do. And whenever you see something that makes you interested or makes you happy, just smile. And actually practice touching the textures or touch whatever you're going to photograph before you photograph it. So even if you found an interesting texture of a tree, touch the bark before photographing it and look at it and smile. And even when you're out shooting street photography, depending on your mood, sometimes you can talk with people and interact with them. Sometimes you can shoot candidly. And I generally find that the slower you walk, feeling the pavement underneath your feet is a good way for you to relax, find more joy in your life, and photograph more beautiful things to be less stressed out and be more artistic and creative. All right, friends. So in this video, I want to share with you the basic concept that everything is editable. As a photographer, you're constantly changing, you're constantly evolving, you're constantly in a state of flux. I think one of the things that actually for me is very intimidating as a photographer is a lot of us who are seeking deeper meaning in our photography or are seeking more fame or recognition, whatever, we think the goal is to make this amazing photography book that will last forever. Now, I think with digital photography and the internet, it's really awesome because everything after you publish it, you could kind of edit it afterwards. And so I'm actually anti-finality. I'm a big fan of the artist Willem de Kooning. He says, I never finish. So he was a painter, he's just kind of painting abstract stuff and he's like, hmm, eh, it's about done. And then he just moves on to the next thing. And I also think the same thing is with photography projects is that with the internet and with digital portfolios, you could constantly add to photo projects, remove from photo projects, you could move around the photos and you could work on a project as long or short as you want. And realize that as a photographer, your taste, your forms, your way of thinking is gonna change. So for example, don't think that you had to be a black and white photographer for your entire life. You could switch, you could evolve to shooting color photography. Maybe you could start shooting with a phone. You could shoot 35 millimeter film. You could shoot medium format film. You could shoot large format film. You could shoot black and white film, color film. There's so many different ways you could change and evolve your working process as a photographer. Also realize that as a photographer, we're the happiest when we're active. So even one thing I've been liking to do is when I'm bored or I'm just kind of trying to relax in the evenings before I sleep, don't just, you know, 
zone out and watch Netflix. I actually keep all my photos synced on Dropbox. So I have Dropbox Pro. I pay about 10 bucks a month for a terabyte of storage. I'm starting to look back at my old photos all the way from 2014, about four years ago, and finding more joy, like reliving my old photographs. And it's, it's actually kind of good because some of the photos that I thought were really good four years ago, now I'm like, eh, I don't think they're that good. But there's actually some photos that I thought four years ago weren't that good. Now I look at them with fresh new eyes. I actually appreciate them more and I realize there's a lot of joy in it. So I would also recommend you as a practical sense, barbell your photography that you're always out making new photos, but also use some time to review your old photos from several years back and treat your own photography website and your own photography blog as your own personal playground to just upload new photos, delete old photos, and just kind of keep things in a state of flux. So remember, photography, art, everything is editable. Even if you're a writer, you blog about something, if you did a typo or something, you go back and you could edit it, you could change it. So don't feel so pressured that your photography needs to be perfect. Even if you're using Facebook or social media or Instagram, you upload photos, if later you don't really like the photo, you can always go back and delete it or remove it or re-upload it. So once again, remember that you're uh, in a state of flux as a photographer. Don't let finality or this concept you need to be perfect hold you back. My suggestion is get it 80% good enough, hit publish, know that you can always go back and edit it later. Hey friends. I'm really excited to have you in this section on personal photography. So basically, I'm gonna talk about what is personal photography, why is personal photography important, and how to do it. So the first thing is, what is personal photography? So for me, personal photography is making photos for yourself. And I think in modern society, we've been programmed to think that doing things which are focused on yourself and selfish is evil. Now, I don't think that's the case. I think the best type of photography we could do is personal because the more personal we make it, the more authentic our photos will be and the more other people could actually relate to it. So basically one of my philosophies is by being more personal and by, by being a little bit more self-centered or self-focused, you could actually end up empowering other people more. And with personal photography, it's really a way for you to photograph your own life and use your own life, your own family, and to use yourself as the main character of your photography. So for example, a lot of documentary photographers will go into the lives of other people and document the lives of foreign cultures, different subcultures, and different families. But in personal photography, you empower yourself by using your own subjective view of the world and realizing that that's just your way of seeing the world and that's okay. I think a lot of times photographers try to make more objective views of reality through photojournalism and reportage photography, but all photography is eventually subjective because you are the lens in which you filter the world. You, f you decide what's significant and you decide what's not significant. So personal photography is all, it's all about making your photography as personal and as subjective as possible. Now, why is personal photography such a powerful concept? For me, personal photography is so powerful because regardless of how busy you are, regardless of what your job is, where you live, etc., you can make good photos and you could create a photography project of your whole life. So think of your whole life and yourself as a photography project. A lot of times people are, okay, you know, I want to photograph boxers in Cuba or I want to photograph a local homeless shelter or I want to photograph a school. But the problem is that often our busy everyday lives keep us from doing it. So a practical way you can think about it, let's say you commute to work every single day, you just have your camera on your neck or on your wrist, you're photographing your commute, you're photographing selfies of yourself in the mirror, you're photographing your shadow. When you come home, you kiss your loved ones, you photograph your kid, you photograph your wife, you photograph your partner. And your whole photographic project could be a documentation of your own life. So you could do it anywhere and once again, it gives you a more sense of gratitude of your life. How to do personal photography. 
it doesn't really matter what camera you have. You could just use your phone, you could use a, a Ricoh GR2 camera, a Fuji X100, whatever. The biggest, most important thing in personal photography is to use a camera that's as unobtrusive as possible and as easy to use as possible. So generally with my personal photography, I've shot a lot of it on a Ricoh GR version 2. I just shoot in program mode, shoot in RAW, and when I'm importing my photos into Lightroom, I just use free air King presets, which are included in the starter kit. What you want to do is reduce as much friction as possible from the photo making process and just photograph based on your gut. So don't worry so much about composition, of getting the perfect lighting, whatever. Anytime you instinctively see something that's personally meaningful to you or resonates within your heart and your soul, just photograph it. So there's really no right or wrong way to shoot personal photography. Just ask yourself, is it personal or is it not personal? And the more personal you can make your photos, the more authentic your photos will be. And the more authentic your photos would be, the more your viewers will relate to your photos and feel some sort of emotional connection and feel affected by your photos in a positive way. All right, friends, in this video, I'm going to share the importance of making photos to impress and please yourself rather than making photos that impress and please others. So with personal photography, you are the most important person to impress in your photography because this is my rationale. The more you make photos that impress yourself and please yourself, the more likely you are to impress or please others with your photos. The reason is this. As a photographer, you're an innovator. There's only one of you on the planet, the one, only one of you who's had the life experiences that you've had. And it's very important for you to give your own subjective view of the world and share it with others. Making photos that impress yourself is so important because especially in today's day with social media, we're always trying to impress other people. And what ends up happening is you crowdsource your self-esteem is that your self-esteem as a photographer or you feel like what your progress you're making your photography is contingent on how many likes your photos get. So I know for myself, this has actually happened a lot is that with Facebook, Instagram, and social media, I told myself I was making photos to impress myself, but I really wasn't because every time I uploaded a photo and it would get a lot of likes, I would feel super happy. But if I uploaded a photo and it didn't get as many likes as I expected, I would actually feel a little bit disappointed. And so I started to use the amount of likes I got as a barometer to figure out how good the photo was. Rather than making the photo, letting it sit and marinate, and then revisiting the photo a week or a month later and then looking at it and thinking, what do I think about the photograph? And I would actually recommend before you share a photo with anybody else, look at your own photo and just kind of meditate to yourself. Do I like this photo? Do I, do I feel impressed with the photo? Or if someone else shot the same photo that I shot, would I like the photograph or not? And ultimately, I don't think there's such thing as good or bad photos. I think there's only photos which impress you or photos that don't impress you. Make photos that excite you, make photos that you think are good, and make photos that you just like to look at. So one thing I like to do is I keep all my photos synced in Dropbox, and every once in a while I just look through my old photographs from several years ago, and I like to look at my, a lot of my old photos. And the reason why this is also so beneficial is that getting famous as a photographer a lot of it is just kind of luck and opportunity and not all of us have this opportunity. So imagine yourself 90 years old on your deathbed looking back to your life as a photographer. Will you look at your photos and feel joy and feel impressed with your own photos? If so, I think you could die with a smile on your face. And I think the more authentic your photos are, the more unique they'll be and the more likely maybe during your life or after your life that they could continue to resonate with others. Hey friends, so this section we're going to talk a little bit about personal photography and what this means in the context of photo philosophy. I think one of the th biggest things in photography what we must do is be grateful. So grateful so for many things. Grateful for being alive, grateful for 
having an interest in photography, grateful that we actually own a camera or a phone or something, and realizing that we should be so grateful for all the amazing digital technologies now that empower us photographers. Can you imagine if you're a photographer in the 1920s, you have black and white film that's like ISO 25, you're running around, you have to worry about processing your photos, and even if you're the world's fa most famous photographer, there's probably not more than 50 photographers in the world who actually know your work, but nowadays with social media, with the internet and everything, we can expose our photography to such a huge population. So realize that we should be grateful for all the opportunities we have to share our work. And I know that I personally got this a lot in my photography is that you feel like your camera is never good enough. You feel that if you had a slightly better camera, you could capture better image quality and therefore your photos will look more beautiful and give you more aesthetic joy. And you also hope that other people will appreciate your, uh, your photos more. But the thing is this, the way that internet marketing and the way that blogs work on the internet is camera companies, bloggers, the whole industry wants you to be perpetually dissatisfied with your camera gear. So for you to keep upgrading your camera, upgrading your lenses and so forth or else the whole industry would collapse. And in recognizing this, how can we use our cameras that we already own or use our, using our phones that we already own? That sure, we might not have the best, newest camera or model or lens or equipment, whatever, but how can we still make beautiful photos which bring us joy and bring us happiness in life? So my first suggestion is realize that maybe your camera is 80% good enough, but that's okay. And rather using that as a tool to photograph what you're grateful for. So even as a basic photography project or a focus you could do is for an entire day, just photograph what you're grateful for. Photograph your cup of coffee, photograph your friends, your loved ones, your family, photograph a tree, photograph a little ladybug friend, photograph a flower, photograph the, the clouds. Anything that puts a smile on your face, every time you click the shutter and you're photographing something, you're essentially saying, I am grateful that you exist. Photography is the art of recognizing what we consider beautiful and what we're grateful for. And so use photography as a tool to have more gratitude in your life. And once again, going back to the whole photographic memento mori concept is photograph your loved ones while they're still alive because one day they will die. One of the biggest tips, uh, one of the biggest lessons I learned while grand photographing my grandfather's funeral, his death was, it's very sad that my grandfather passed away and he died, but I still have all my loved ones all around me that I could photograph. So use this, using that as an opportunity for me to photograph more photos of my mom, more photos of Cindy, more photos of myself and Annette. And the more we could shoot with a grateful heart, the happier we'll be in life, and also the more productive we'll be as photographers. So uh, once again, photograph your blessing in your life, upload to social media, use hashtag blessings or whatever, and use this as a chance for you to photograph what you're grateful of in your life. And an Air Kim forum, so forum.airkimphotography.com or just Google Air Kim forum, upload photos which you're grateful for. Upload photos that you consider blessings in your life and photograph things that it might not be the most artistically innovative photo, but as long as it puts a smile on your face, it's a good photo. So friends, really excited to share with you the basic concept of entrepreneurship and photo loss. So first and foremost, what is entrepreneurship and what is my personal definition of entrepreneurship? So for me, the basic idea is, if you're a photographer that shares your photos online or you have a Facebook or Instagram, I think you're already a photography entrepreneur. My definition of entrepreneurship is risk taking and trying to make a positive impact on the world that's beyond yourself. So as a photography entrepreneur, you don't necessarily need to make money. I think an entrepreneur is somebody who is willing to follow their own voice, to say something that might not be popular, but to essentially follow your own voice. And ultimately I see entrepreneurship as empowerment because with entrepreneurship, you could essentially put a dent in the universe as in the word my best friend Steve Jobs, you could actually change reality. You could 
make a positive impact. I think a lot of us in life feel disempowered because we feel like no matter how hard we try, we can't really make a difference. But do realize that you as a photographer, you do have the change, the power and the ability to change the world. So as a photographer, one of the basic concepts I want to share with you is asking yourself, how can my photos empower myself and how can they empower other people? So first and foremost, if you're not strong and empowered yourself already, how do you expect to empower other people? There's this ancient saying 2000 years ago by Publius Cyrus, do not water the garden of others if your own garden is parched, if your own garden is dying. So the way I use photography as a way to empower myself is I use photography as walking meditation. I use street photography as a tool to connect with other people. And then everything I learned through photography, I share this with others to hopefully empower other people. Now, no matter how hard you try, you're not going to please 100% of people out there. But this is my practical tip for you. If your photos or your philosophy or whatever your ideas you share has the power to empower at least one other human being on planet Earth, it is your duty to share your photos and to share your ideas with other people. So recognize photography entrepreneurship is empowerment. And the best way to do that on a practical level with the internet is start your own photography blog. I recommend registering your website via blue, bluehost.com and installing wordpress.org and using your own photography website and blog as a platform to empower yourself, to share your own life story and to empower other people. Hey friends, one concept I wanna share with you in photo philosophy and entrepreneurship is this. Essentially just do it and recognize there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. So I think a lot of us want to do more entrepreneurial things. We want to put ourselves out there. We want to share photos. We want to publish works and build a following. But we're afraid that other people might criticize us, might hate on us. We're afraid we might get trolled or we might be afraid that we might fail. But in the context of photography, and even assuming you already have a day job, or even if you're a photography, you're making money through photography, recognize you're not gonna starve to death. You're not gonna die. I think biologically, we still have this fear mechanism, fear of death or starving to death, which holds us back from achieving our personal maximum in life. And my personal philosophy is this. Recognize that there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. So that means this is let's say you work on a photography project for several years and you publish as a book. Let's say you don't sell any or you don't really make an impact. That's not necessarily failure. It's just feedback. The feedback is maybe other people aren't interested, but that's okay. Also realize that Vincent van Gogh in his whole lifetime, he didn't sell a single painting. Now, does that make him any less successful than any other artist? I don't think so because now he's one of the most celebrated artists of all time and he sells his well, he's dead now, but his paintings sell for millions of dollars. So recognize that the truth is as a photographer and as an entrepreneur, you might never achieve worldly success in terms of money, fame, power, influence during your lifetime, but that doesn't matter. It's still worth doing because even a lot of philosophers, a lot of poets, a lot of individuals, they dedicate their whole lives and during their lifetime, they might not achieve success, but it's for future generations of humanity that they do their work. So I would recommend for you, don't be afraid of failure. If it interests you, if you're passionate about it, if you're enthusiastic about it, just do it. And one of the practical tips I would give to you is as a photographer, don't look at your social media numbers. And also if you have a blog, disable your stats. I've disabled my stats the last five years and it's the best thing I've done to innovate and do things which I'm interested in, but I know that other people might not be interested in because a lot of photographers and bloggers, they follow all their progress and stats, uh, statistics by page views, follower counts and so forth, but ends up selling your own creative ideas. So for example, as a photography blogger, of course you do a camera review, you can get tons of page views. Or of course on Instagram, you can be Instagram a photo of your camera and a cappuccino and like a bunny in the background. You can get more likes. We all know this, right? But it's your duty as a photographer to never compromise your own artistic vision. And once again, as an entrepreneur, it's not about making money. It's about putting yourself out there and just doing it. So 
Don't ask other people for permission or their approval or their feedback or opinion before you pursue a photography project. Just do it. Just go out and shoot it. And then let's say you collect 20 photos or so, and then sit down and ask people for feedback. Don't wait for permission before you attempt something. So remember friend, you have the power in your own hands. Go out, shoot, just do it. Take that risk and have fun doing it. Okay friends, so in photo philosophy, the last concluding point I wanna share with you in entrepreneurship is this. How much is enough? Once you have enough, and then what? So my photograph journey has been the last 10 years of my life and the goal was always to do photography full time for a living, to travel, to see the world, have solo exhibitions, book prints, become internet famous, etc. I've accomplished all these goals in my life and I actually got a little bit lost slash depressed because I'm like, wait, what's the next big thing like? And now what? Am I just going to just keep hustling harder to get more followers, to get more likes, to make more money or something else? I've recognized and realized that this is the truth. Even in the point, like a lot of photographers, they want to make a lot of money to get sponsored and have all these fancy new cameras, but it actually doesn't bring you joy. You're only getting joy when you're making new photography projects <clears throat> and you're innovating as a photographer. So for me, once you have enough to just pay your rent and feed yourself and enough for coffee and Wi-Fi, the purpose should be for you to continue to making new art, to continue innovating and to keep pushing yourself and challenging yourself to make more interesting photos that please yourself. So for example, I've been trying to evolve in my photography, my street photography by doing more layers. And I'm doing this a lot by studying cinematography like Stanley Kubrick. I really love the way he creates layers and the, re the way he's able to create visual complexity. And even one thing I've been doing for fun is I'm just using a Lumix G9 4K video still camera and I'm shooting video street photography, just these nice street scenes. And I'm trying to create visual storytelling in innovative new ways. I'm using a GoPro Fusion 360 camera to figure out new ways I could t tell stories. Because honestly, at this point, I know I'm never going to starve to death. My needs are very meager and I have enough money to probably retire in Vietnam until I die at age 90. So ask yourself, friends, what are your goals in photography and life? And let's say you accomplished all of them. What are you going to do for the rest of your life? I think the answer is to continue to make art. It's not to just keep making more money because when you're dead, you can't take the money with you. And I don't think anyone's 90 years old on their deathbed lying in their beds like, wow, I'm so grateful I saved $10 million. No, like the theory, the, the point is when you die, you should be left with $0. You, you should use your whole life making something that's meaningful. So I'd rather be 90 years old or I plan to be 100. So. I, I want to be 100 years old on my deathbed and like I'm so grateful that I spent all my time, my energy and my effort creating photography projects that empowered other people, creating new innovations in photography that help people think outside the box and to have made a positive impact in the world. So friend, I encourage you to do the same thing. Really challenge yourself to think how much is enough in photography? At what point do you not need any more cameras, followers, likes, money, power, influence, wealth, so forth in your life? What do you really want out of photography and how can you keep shooting until you die at age 100? I challenge you to keep shooting, to never doubt yourself, to have fun, to see the world from the eyes of a child and always make photos that please yourself and seek to empower yourself and empower others in humanity.